Hi, everybody. This is Will Cooper of Cigar Coop and of the Primetime Show, Primetime Special Edition, and Primetime Jukebox. And I'm here today because I'm going to be talking about a very special cigar that's about to hit the stores as this is being recorded right now. And it's from our friends at J.C. Newman Cigar Company. And, you know, it's a really exciting year for J.C. Newman Cigar Company. This is a company that's celebrating its 125th anniversary. And no matter what the business you're in, to celebrate 125 years, that's kind of something really special, um, you know, because we hear in, in today's world that, you know, a lot of businesses simply aren't around for that long, especially a lot of small businesses and certainly uh, even some large corporations don't make it that long. Uh, J.C. Newman, a family-run cigar company uh, based out of Ybor City in Tampa, Florida, they've been doing it for 125 years. And, um, you know, I have personally have had uh, like a connection with J.C. Newman. Um, you know, it was founded by Julius Caesar Newman, right? Now, I didn't know anyone in the Newman family, but Stanford Newman, the second generation of uh, the Newman family, who uh, was the patriarch of the family and ran the business for a long time, uh, his birthday uh, was June 12th, and he was actually born on June 12th, 1916. And where there's a connection is my grandfather, uh, whose name was Murray, uh, his birthday was, his birth date was actually also June 12th, 1916. So, you know, as, as every year I know the Newman celebrate um, with, you know, they celebrate obviously uh, Stanford's birthday, a very important thing. And I always enjoy watching that because of the connection with my grandfather. And it always kind of makes me uh, remember my grandfather a little extra special uh, because of, you know, that connection. Um, and, you know, there's not a day I don't think about my grandfather, but um, certainly he, um, when that day comes along, it's a very special, special day. Back to the 125th anniversary piece. The, uh, you know, J.C. Newman, they're celebrating with a very special release, uh, the Yagua, which we're going to get into. Uh, we're going to do an, an unboxing of the Yagua here. Um, because it is such a unique project. Now, I, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach because I've seen a lot of media guys, they're going through uh, the exercise of an unboxing. And, you know, unboxing is kind of a cool thing that we've seen in a lot of YouTube videos and everything. And I'm kind of going a few steps ahead with the unboxing. So you don't see any sell -off. I'm not showing you the carton that this was shipped in from J.C. Newman. I'm not taking the cello off, right? But as far as opening the box goes, that's going to be the first time where I actually lift this lid that you'll see on the video. Um, Yagwa is a project that we have covered quite a bit on uh, Cigar Coop. So if you have... If you were following our 2019 IPCPR trade show coverage, the Yagua was previewed at the trade show. And we were told about, we were told some high level details about the project. So I knew ahead of time some of the basics that this project was going to be about. More details came out as uh, the release date of this project has become closer, uh, you know, to fruition. And um, so we learned a lot more about it as, as this went on. And, um, you know, I think it's a kind of cool project because even if you just look at this box, right, this is not your normal uh, cigar box. Um, you know, it's just not one. It's a different design. It's kind of got this crate design. Um, I did peel the cello off and there you, you can actually, if you kind of look, you may be able to see inside a little bit, but not get a feel. But, you know, it's got this kind of, uh, you know, this crate look, you know, as opposed to a traditional box, which... Um, here I have some of the J.C. Uh, Newman uh, Cuesta Rays uh, that come out of the Dominican Republic. Uh, this is a, a wrap box that we're, you know, most folks are probably familiar with a box like this. This is kind of a traditional box. I love a box uh, like this, and I love actually what they've done with the Yagua. So it's kind of a really, really cool thing to do that. Um, so, like I said, I know some high-level details about the Yagua, um, but I'm actually going to get to see and touch this for the first time as we go through this video, which I'm kind of really, really excited about. Um, so let me kind of just kind of go back and before we kind of get in, because I, like I said, this is a very different project in terms of how the cigar is produced. And ultimately it led to kind of how this cigar is packaged a bit. And I'm, I'm really curious to see what happens when I open that part of the box here. Um, let me just kind of go back and uh, do, I'm gonna move this here for a second. I'm gonna go through a couple of um, cigar, couple of props here and what I'm about to show here is this is a, a very old wooden mold that I got from a factory um, a wooden mold 
is something that's, you know, this is what's used to kind of create the shape of a cigar. And this is a very traditional type of wooden mold. And what happens is if you've gone to the cigar factories, and I'm going to try to pull this open here so you can see it. Um, the cigars are rolled. They're pressed, they're put into these uh, molds. You can see there's slots in here. Um, this is a very, like I said, a very old wooden mold here, but there's certainly some today are, are more uh, durable plastic that's used. Um, and the cigars are rolled and, and they're placed in here. And then what happens is after the cigars are rolled and placed, uh, they're put into this, they're put in here, they're pressure applied to it. And that's how you get the shape of a cigar, right? And that's what a cigar mold is eventually uh, done. And then the wrappers put on the cigars. Once the wrappers put on the cigars, then um, the, the rest of the process happens. It, it, it's aged. It goes through banding. Um, and eventually the cigars, I'm going to move this back over here just so I have a little more uh, real estate. And um, they're put into a box Sort of like like what we see here with these Quest arrays. They're, they're of course, many times companies will put cello on this, and hopefully I can get that so you can see it without the light shining on it. Uh, but yeah, that's a very traditional way that we've seen cigars made. And if you've followed and gone to factories, um, this is the way it's done. They're, they're putting those molds, uh, the wrappers put on. Um, eventually, they come packaged. And, and what's really interesting is when you look at these boxes and you know, just the band work and how they kind of uh, put these bands on and actually put the cello on. Um, it's an art. Um, it's a real art to do that. So that's what's really, that's a traditional way of doing that, right? So Yago is going to break the rules for that, okay? Not break the rules, but it's going to use a very, very different technique to go about and do that. Let's kind of uh, move this back here. Um, so Yago, what, what's happening here is... Um, you're going to see that the cigars that are, that are done here, they're done without a mold, okay? And um, what's really interesting is uh, this comes from a, uh, a, a technique that was done by uh, Lasario Lopez's grandfather. And Lasario Lopez is the, uh, he is a factory manager at the J.C. Newman Pensa factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, right? Um, and his grandfather would, would do something different. He'd take the fresh rolled tobacco, and as opposed to using a mold, um, he'd use a piece of a, a, a Cuban palm leaf tree or uh, what they, that's actually known as a yagua, um, a yagua leaf. And he would kind of take that and use that to get the shape of um, his cigar um, to, to kind of keep the cigar together, um, so to speak. And um, those cigars would actually be, um, you know, they're packaged, uh, they're what's called wet packaged. So they're, um, they're rolled, the wrappers put on, they're, they're put into, uh, they're kind of bound up with this yagua leaf. And uh, that's what's kind of going to be used to give the shape of the cigar as opposed to using the cigar mold, which I just showed a couple of minutes ago. Um, it's, it's a technique that you don't see that often, right? And, um, you know, again, the cigars are packaged. What you're going to see, and this is what I know from some of the preview of this, the cigars are packaged with, the, they're wet packed. So in other words, these cigars are rolled, the bands put on them. but um, they don't sit in a the mold. They're kind of, uh, they, they take the shape and they use this palm leaf to really keep this together. Um, and that's what's going to give the shape of the cigar. You're going to see the shape of the cigar is going to be a much different type of um, shape than maybe you've seen before. Um, that part's I know about the Yagua. As I open the box here on the Yagua, I'm going to be real curious to see uh, what happens uh, when, when, how that's going to look and feel inside. So let's kind of, uh, like I said, I've gotten to a point where the, the cello on the outside is open. Um, I'm going to move my ashtray here for a minute so I can kind of put this uh, front and center. And we're going to take a look at the inside of this box together. So uh, join me on this. So here it is. This is a box, like I said, uh, crate type box, definitely something. Uh, limited production of these, by the way, because this technique is not something that can be, cigars are handmade to begin with, right? But this is a very in, an intricate process that J.C. Newman is using here. So you have, as far as these boxes go, there's only about a thousand of these boxes out there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, a, a large release by any means. And there's 20 cigars that are in this box. So let's kind of open up the box and we'll take a look at these cigars together. And um, let's make sure that we can see everything okay. And um, right out of the gate, um, I just said, I, I love this, okay? 
you know, when I get a box of cigars, I'm not just looking for a unit of cigars together. I I want the story of the cigar, right? I, I just, I want a little bit of the story. And, you know, what I love about J.C. Newman is they're, they're, they have such a um, a reverence for, for history as far as the cigar goes. Um, and, you know, they, they this is the story that it's just told. And this is uh, Lazario Lopez's story. And I'm going to read it out um, on the air here just so you can see it. And he says, my family has worked with tobacco for many generations. Growing up in Cuba in the 1940s, I spent countless hours with my grandfather in the tobacco fields of Pinar del Rio. At our family farm, my grandfather would take fresh rolled tobacco leaves from the curing mines and roll cigars without any molds or presses. To keep his cigars safe, he would tie a handful of them together using pieces of the Cuban royal palm tree known as Viagua. When he was ready to enjoy his personal cigars, he untied the bundle. He loved how every cigar had its unique shape. He called these cigars Yagua after the palm tree and its bright red seeds. I still remember the rich aroma and taste of my grandfather's cigars. Today, I've recreated the Yagua, rolling them exactly the way my grandfather did a century ago. So, you know, one thing that he mentioned in there is the shape of those cigars. And, and that's something also I do know a little of the backstory covering this from a media perspective. I, I kind of know that you're going to see that these cigars are going to have a very, very unique shape. Now, what I want to do is uh, I actually was looking at this, but from the angle, I want to show everyone here. Um, in there, you can see the tied bundle. It's got a very thick piece of, of cellophane on that. Um, this is very nicely put into the box. So this is not going to move or shake here in transport. Um, and it's, it's a snug fit. So this is going to be a little fun kind of taking this out of the box. Um, without, without, hopefully I won't drop anything, anything but, but I'm going to be real careful. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, on the sides here, there are some more, and this is, you can really feel that palm leaf there. I mean, and you can just, if you kind of look, it's like, hey, this is genuine. This is the real deal here, guys. This is not like put in at, uh, for adornments here. So those are in there, and I'm just going to pull them out. And they kind of keep things on the side there. Kind of a, a light aroma. I, I don't have the best senses of smell unless the cigar is actually smoke, smoking right now. Um, so I am going to pull out the, the box of the Yagua, and I did it very easy. And here we see it again. There is a, this is the bundle that was put inside of the, uh, you know, the box. Um, I have, you know, I'm not, a, people know I'm not a fan of, of bundles to begin with, right? But um, not so much. Um, I don't like those, those, what they call the mazos where it's dark paper all over it and I can't see it. What I like about this, right, is I can look at this right away. If I'm a retailer and I'm selling these right away, I can look, I can see the caps of these cigars. I can see the footers of these cigars. And when you look at the footage, you can start to see, I'm looking already uh, on the camera and I can see some of the, the, the shapes that are on there. So I kind of like this and I, I think, you know what, to get the, uh, obviously we, we need to have the palm leaf on there. So um, while you can't see the whole cigar, I do like the fact that I can kind of look inside the wheel here uh, that's covered by this Yagua. And I'm able to kind of look at that and, and make my own assumptions there. And you can see that they're tied together. There. So the next step, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the, uh, the, the cell. And this is, like I said, this is the part I want to be a little careful with because I want to, I want to damage this. So um, me with, me with a knife is sometimes not the best idea. Um, I don't have so many of those fancy, uh, you know, switch blades that I've seen some of my media guys. I'm using the, the basic kitchen knife here to kind of just take a little bit of appeal here. And this is the only, this is obviously we wanted to do this part because I'm looking at this for the first time, seeing and touching it, I should say. You know, like I said, I got a little bit of a preview at the trade show. Um, it is some thicker cello. I'll tell you that straight out. Um, that's definitely, and this is very, very, um, this ain't going, I mean, this is really good. So the cigars aren't moving, um, at all. And we'll work on this. Like I said, this was going to be the, this is why I actually don't like taking the cello off of these things. Cause I'm just never, I was never, the, I'm never good at even unwrapping a present here. Uh, but we're going to kind of go and we'll get that going. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited. Here we go. Oh, and you can see, these are beauties actually. So we're gonna. So now um, the solo is off. We'll discard that. A little better view of those caps. Um, a little better view of the uh, the footer. Um, it's definitely got um, 
it's got that nice tobacco. If you've ever had some of the cigars and gone into an aging room of, of a cigar factory, I mean, this is just beautiful. Um, what, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm actually, uh, now, you know, like I said, my, my smell may not be the best, but, um, it's really good. Now we'll kind of, we'll get in, we'll talk a little about the blend a little bit, but there's, uh, there's still some more work that needs to be done here with these ties. So I'm going to attempt to slide the ties off, um, with this. And what we'll do is we will put everything back into the, the box. And, uh, this part's actually pretty easy. So, so far I'm doing, I guess so far I haven't fumbled anything other than, uh, than put that out there, but, um, let's kind of move some stuff and we get some working space here. And uh, we're gonna un we're gonna unwrap this this uh, and now you can see this is the the yagua so you can see this is a really nice stick that we have here uh, on that and uh, now we're actually getting a real look at these cigars and and how beautiful they are and uh, wow I mean just if you are just into rustic and these are this is what the cigars look at and. You can look at them and you can see how they aren't the same size in a lot of cases. Um, they may not be the most pretty cigars, but they got charm. I mean, so that's the thing. I'm looking at these. It, this doesn't. This is a cigar that I think this is how I would want these cigars to look as they come out of the bundle here. Um, so really nice. Uh, here's another little look at the foot there. Um, let's see if we can get that on the camera for folks to see. Uh, the J.C. Newman um did a great job uh, looking at these now uh, i'm gonna take one out and we're gonna fire one up but let me talk a few things about this particular cigar and in particular what i love about what jc newman's doing um so first up the blend is a connecticut broadleaf wrapper over nicaraguan binder and filler um and connecticut broadleaf it's a rustic thick wrapper i think it's perfect for a cigar like this now the other thing that I really love about what J.C. Newman does is they do not rush product to market. And I really, really respect what they do. And this has shown why their last, like their releases time and time again, just kind of continue to, to elevate to another level. You know, if you go back a few years ago, the J.C. Newman uh, Black Diamond, uh, a fantastic cigar we waited a long time for a black that black diamond it's a project they talked about for many many uh for many many months there and um they actually went ahead and uh you know it, it took about i want to say it took about four or five years before that went to market but we finally got it um then they started working with uh, jeff borshowitz on the american and the American is a um, a really nice project, which is a, it's using not just all American tobacco, not just that for the first time using a Florida sun-grown wrapper leaf on there, but everything about that cigar is American from the, the boxes made to the hinges it's made in the USA. Beautiful project by Drew Newman. And it's one of the top cigars I've had in 2020. So, I mean, you know, and of course, and actually, that Black Diamond also placed a few years ago on the Cigar Coop Top 25 list. So again, the quality of what J.C. Newman's doing, second to none. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm very happy that they've trusted me to kind of and asked me to do this video to talk about this cigar. So let's kind of get to the next step, which is going to be taking this open and and doing this. So I was hoping I could slide one of these cigars out. It's it's uh, I'm gonna try to do it. So without damaging it, and I think I I was able to. This may have been a risk, but here we go. And this is like I said, you look, let's take a look at this cigar here. I mean, oh my goodness, this is like if you could. It's I'm gonna try to show this on the camera. Very rustic, okay. It's it's actually it's uneven, okay. It's very uneven, but that's what this was supposed to be. So, uh, and I'll say it's like I said, it's got a charm to it. It's. This has got probably, it almost is like a hexagon in terms of how it, it's done there. Um, here's the other interesting thing uh, for everyone knows. Um, these, some of these Jaguars that are in this box are going to be sent um, to Australia. Um, one of the members of the primetime team, Dave Burke, uh, who hosts our music show, Primetime Jukebox, which brings cigars and music together. Um, you know, we have to always get Dave cigars, right? Because Dave is, um, 
it's hard to get cigars in Australia. And I don't think a lot of these thousand boxes, if any, are going to get into Australia, unfortunately, not because of any fault of the Newmans, but more because of um, that there's just some onerous import taxes and things they have to deal with, right? So a lot, it, it's, it's probably, it's unfortunate with that. So I'm kind of curious when I send some of these to Dave, right? You know, and I, I think they said some of these may start coming back to shape, you know, because of the, of not having the pressure on that. I mean, we're going to, we're going to see as far as that goes, um, how they make it to Australia. Um, you know, and Dave usually, I think when I send Dave stuff, he usually lights one up right away. And, um, later on he, he smokes it again. Um, he's got a great palate as well. So I think at some point, like on a jukebox show, Dave will be, Dave and I will be smoking these again, um, and see it. So again, kind of very excited that what we see here, and I'm also excited I, I didn't have to take the bundle apart um, because it's going to make sort of a nice – I could do my photography later on on that, so um, – which I'm excited about. So uh, good job by the Newmans there. And uh, so, you know, we're going to get into – we're going to get into lighting this thing up right now. So um, I have not tasted this cigar. I've not smoked this cigar. Um, and we'll certainly see how it is going to go. Um, so I'm going to – what I'm do is I'll move the Yagua box and move my ashtray back, right? A beautiful 125th anniversary. Again, congratulations to the Newmans there. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to actually take a sip of water here because water is uh, going to be key. You know, it's, it's, uh, this is my first smoke of the day, by the way, too. Ah, that, that's good. And uh, let's cut, cut this up and uh, see what this is going to bring. Cap came off very easy, straight cut. Um, I, I can tell you, don't V-cut this, okay? <laughs> um, this, that's kind of, that's my initial reaction. I don't think you want to V-cut this cigar. Uh, I wouldn't bullet cut. Use a beautiful straight cut. The cap comes right off. Um, and you get some of that broad leaf sweetness right off the dry drawer there. Um, another thing I'll just say is on, on, you know, on Cigar Coop, we don't review cigars off the truck. So that's just a, a policy that we have because we feel, you know, we want to have a cigar, you know, make sure it's got acclimated and stabilized to the right temperature and humidity. Sometimes on the primetime show, we will smoke something off the truck. So this is not meant to be a technical review. It's meant to, I think, um, I would call this, to quote my friends over at the Cigar Dojo, they use the word first impressions and i hope they would be okay with me just using that word here with first impressions um and otherwise I, I i don't think eric will get mad at me on that but it's kind of it's kind of like i said just feeling this cigar in your hand it's something that really uh it's really really uh nice so um and it's just like i said i love the the charm that this cigar is going to bring um, you know, you look like if any, if this cigar, the interesting thing, I think, I think the packaging really makes this cigar because, you know, you may look at this and say, what the heck happened to this cigar? Right. But man, it, like I said, it just, uh, it's got a charm to it. And, you know, I think folks know a lot of us on the primetime show, they were history buffs, especially Bear to Pussy, who co-hosts a uh, special edition to me. Um, and, and, you know, Aaron's going to come down to flavor with the cigar. So we'll have to kind of see what happens with Aaron on that. But uh and the band is beautiful yagua uh just a classic cuban style old style cuban band um er everything like i said so far it's time to just light this thing up and let's just see what, what this is going to bring to the table here Right out of the gate, uh, some earthy flavors, a little of that broad leaf sweetness, a nice pepper. If I had to say, it's not very strong. I mean, this is in the medium range. I mean, it looks like this is going to be a beast of a cigar just because of the dark wrapper, but it's it's not really. Um, but it's starting out, like I said, very nice and earthy, kind of what I would expect from it. 
Um, I can say feeling the cigar in my hand, it's taken a little getting used to um, because of the, the odd shape of the press of this thing. And, and, you know, here's the thing what I'm going to say as I start smoking this. The, I didn't, like I said, this is where I thought this exercise that Jason Newman asked me to go to was very valuable. I did not, like I said, I, I had an idea of the packaging. I knew the story behind this cigar. But feeling the cigar in my hand, that's kind of a real, that's kind of a completely different thing. And because, and I look at it, and like I said, you look at this and it's kind of, you know, it's bumpy, it's pressy. It's, it's everything that you would say is not pristine, right? But it's got this charm and it's got this story. It's got this history behind it. A little bit of black pepper I'm getting off of it. No doubt this is classic Connecticut, vintage classic Connecticut broadleaf that I'm getting off this. Some nice pepper on the retro hail. Um, you know, and I'm kind of really stoked that they did a um a, a Connecticut broadleaf with this. And you know, again, you know, right now it's a, if you're if you're a fan of cigars, it's not the best time for Connecticut broadleaf. Not that the uh, cigars are not good, but um it's simply because there's not a lot of it. But you know, this is a project I'm sure that the Newmans have done for a long time. They've been putting this aside, and I'm sure they're ready to kind of you know roll this out and have the right amount of tobacco with it. So, you know, and it's, again, I'm, I'm going to say this is a very old school. It's not going to have a, a – sometimes Connecticut barley, but a little syrupy. I don't like it when it gets a little syrupy. This has got – like I said, it's not um, – starting to get a little bit of a cocoa sweetness off this right now, but it's not, not overpowering with sweetness. The draw is good. The, draw, the cigar is drawing very well. I was wondering what, what would happen as far as, you know – how this cigar would draw, especially with such an unorthodox technique uh, that this is bringing to the table. Um, I like a touch of resistance on a draw. And that's what this is bringing. It's got a touch of resistance. I have to just work it a little. But that usually will translate to a draw getting a very high score on, on a cigar coupe. Yeah, so this it is very, very good. Um, very good. Very good cigar. Um, this is a cigar, you know, and I get, I'm going to get through the whole experience, obviously, but I like the way it's, it's, it's starting off um, as far as this goes. But what I want to do is uh, talk a few more things, um, you know, like I said, about about this particular project. And, um, you know, the other thing that um, I wonder is, you know, I wonder if this could be, that with the success of this blend, maybe, and I haven't asked JC Newman the question, maybe they kind of look at some other blends that they can bring to the table using the technique. And I'd be real curious what now, immediately I'm, I'm thinking, well, what would this be like with an Abano wrapper? What would this be like with a Corolla wrapper? Um, um, not sure about Connecticut shade, right? Because I think that's a very thin wrapper. But, but I am kind of, you know, kind of got me thinking a little bit about this, right? Uh, love again, again. I got, I can't say enough about the packaging of this thing. Uh, this is just, this is just beautiful. There was a lot of thought put into the packaging of this cigar, um, to kind of bring this. You know, again, it was one thing for, um, you know, uh, Lazario Lopez's grandfather to make these cigars and smoke them later. It's another thing to transport them um, to retail, you know, to, to the retailers, for the retailers to put these on the shelf, right? And then ultimately for consumers to get these cigars and um, come back and then, you know, just kind of store them somewhere. What's great is I'm going to probably take this box. I'm going to put it right into my, my uh, I have a, uh, uh, an upright humidor. I can put that right in there. Um, you can certainly unbundle them as well. Kind of like I said, I want to keep them, together as much as possible for now. Uh, like I said, I know I'm gonna have to break these up to send some to Dave Burke pretty soon in Australia. Um, and if I don't send them to him, uh, he's gonna be pretty mad at me, right? Uh, because I, I, I actually am really curious to see what Dave uh, and all my colleagues think uh, from the media right now. This is very good. This is a good, okay, here's the thing. I went through, I talked about packaging. I talked about a history of a project. 
it's starting out really good. It's getting better as the cigars opening up too. So my 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 first impression is like, this is a great broadleaf cigar, old school broadleaf. Uh kind of a, doesn't taste like a Henry Clay. Kind of in that mold of like the rustic old school Connecticut broadleafs that the original Henry Clay's brought to the table. It's a nice earthy. I'm starting to get like a, a little bit of a coffee taste to it. A little cocoa powder. Not overly sweet though. More maybe of a, of a just a touch of it, which is just really making a nice cigar open up uh, there. Um, the, like I said, the draw has been really good. Strength is, I'd say, strength and body are probably about a, on a scale of one to ten, about a six to six and a half. It's not. That's not going to knock you over. It doesn't taste like any, like I said, it's, it's got that, I mentioned I, the comparison to Henry Clay, um, but it's not going to taste like a Henry Clay. It doesn't taste like anything I've had from, from J.C. Newman before. Um, it, you know, and I know they make some Connecticut Broly's with the Pearl of the Mars, and it's got a very different taste to it. I think what I really like about this is um, it's, I'm smoking this. This video is being recorded in the morning. Um, so I'm having this as my first smoke and, and I'm totally fine with it. And I can see me enjoying one of these uh, over a cup of coffee. Um, I didn't want to use coffee on, on a video to, to do it, but I can really see myself enjoying this cigar with, with a cup of coffee. And I can see myself, um, later on, uh, you know, wrapping up the day with this. I think my only complaint is that they didn't make enough of them, but that's, you know, again, that's the constraints of the tobacco. That's the constraints of obviously the process, um, and those aren't that's those negatives should be looked at as positive. That they're looking to get the right tobacco here with this, um, and they're you know obviously they want to follow the process that was laid out with this. Um, so this is excellent. So I want to thank everybody. I'm going to continue to enjoy this cigar. Um, and, you know, definitely I would say look, look to your local retailer um, to get, to, you know, get these cigars on here. Uh, we'll have a review at some point on Cigar Coop probably in the next few weeks. Um, we have opened the package and uh, we'll, like I said, the first impressions are really, really good with the cigar. Um, it, it gets a, it gets an A, an A, an A from me. So I can't, I can't say anything about that, but look for that on there as well. Um, and, you know, Check out J.C. Newman's website. They have a new website, uh, jcnewman.com. Uh, they have a lot of good history and a lot of good things, um, you know, on, on the website there. And I'm sure you can, you know, shoot them something on social media, and they'd be really glad to hear about it. As, um, and please let us know here at uh, Cigar Coop or Primetime uh, what you think of these cigars. Um, this is something really special. It's something really unique. The market needed this. Uh, and it's a great way to kind of commemorate 125 years in business. Thanks, everybody, for watching this video, um, and um, we'll see everybody soon. I'm going to get back to my agua. Take care.